Hello, my name is Francesco and I'm a research assistant in statistics at Imperial College in London. Today I would like to present a paper that was completed as part of a summer internship at Spotify Tech Research last summer. The region worked with Lucas Maestro, Dimitri Moore, Ashton Anderson and Munia Lalmas. In this work I will present the preference transition model, called PTM, an interpretable statistical dynamic model for user preferences. The underlying idea is simple. Most recommended systems tend to capture simultaneous preferences, so users who like A tend to like B as well. It has been studied the recommended systems are very effective at exploiting current preferences, but might be less efficient at exploring the music space. In particular, it has been studied that recommended systems might tend to isolate users into filter bubbles of the item space. We can think about those as the little islands in the picture, corresponding to genres, for example. The user might like an island a lot, and the user let the recommended system explore it very thoroughly. But there are also other islands that the user might like. It has been studied also that diversity in consumption is particularly important in web services, since it is positively associated with metrics that are, for example, like retention and conversion. So we'd like to find a way uh, to help the user move around those little islands or filter bubbles in a very meaningful way. So, the underlying idea is that user consumptions change over time. So, using the example of the music streaming service, a user might like pop, but then they gradually shift towards indie over time, for example. So, we would like to understand if it's possible to learn an underlying structure for those transitions. And in such a way, we would like to find um, a technique to help the user move around those little islands of filter bubble in a meaningful way. So, a research question is very simple. How well does preference for the item A at time t predict preference of, time, of item B at time t plus 1? And uh, our proposal, the preference transition model, PTM, tries to address exactly this problem. Our work is related to uh, a lot of different uh, fields. Uh, in particular, the two most relevant are dynamic collaborative filtering, for example, dynamic matrix factorization methods or tensor-based approaches, or sequential recommended systems. In this work, in particular, we focus on obtaining interpretable insights on how user preferences change in the long term, not within a single listening sequence, but uh, within a large uh, time frame. Also, this work might be related to, as I mentioned before, diversity in recommended systems, and from a more statistical point of view, estimation of relationships between multivariate processes. For this presentation, I will use a running example from a music streaming application, uh, which is, of course, Spotify. So, Spotify gives a microgenre to each track, and there are more than 4,000 of those microgenres. Some, as you can see in the picture, are very generic, for example, dance pop. Other are really specific, like, for example, Burge and New Wave. And using the microgenres, we can construct a data set of longitudinal consumption traces. In particular, we sample 100,000 UK premium subscribers who were consistently active in the last five years. And for each user microgenre pair, we took the total number of streams for that specific genre and aggregated per quarter. This gives us a sequence of matrices of counts that we used that would be used to estimate trajectories between music genres. Now, you might ask yourself, is it really true that user consumption shifts over the years? Well, with this picture, I tried to demonstrate that this is the case. So for each user, we measure the total variation distance between the streams in quarter 1 2016 and the future periods, and plot the histogram for all the future periods. So, uh, just to remind you, the total variation is the uh, statistical measure of difference between two probability distributions. If the total variation is zero, then that means that the distributions are identical. If the total variation is one, then the distributions are completely different. So if the average of the histogram is towards the left, so towards zero, then that means that the streaming habits are between the two time periods are similar, whereas if the mean of the distribution is towards the right of the plot, so towards one, that means that the distributions uh, have changed. So clearly, the variation on average increases over the years, showing the users' consumptions in Q2 2020 has evolved a lot compared to consumption in Q1 2016. Now, how can we model the evolution of user preferences? We used a simple model with a first-order microstructure. In particular, here, pi is the distribution on how the user has allocated its listening budget across genres. And we multiply this distribution by a transition matrix between genres A, 
which gives a predicted distribution on how the listening budget would be allocated in the next time period. Importantly, this is the directional model, not necessarily symmetric. And this picture shows you a very simple example. So let's start from user one. User one only listened to saw, and if we multiply, that's probably the probability vector one zero zero, so the entire budget allocated to saw, uh, we multiply it by the matrix A, and we obtain predicted uh, distribution that gives 50% of the streaming budget to saw, 40% to new age, and 10% to blues. So if you listen to saw, you will likely listen to new age next. Now, let's take user two. So user two instead allocates the entire listening budget in period, time, in period T minus one to new age. Now, we multiply this vector by the same matrix, the same transition matrix A, and we obtain 40% for new age and blues, and only 20% for saw. So if you listen to new age, you will likely listen to blues next. So the relations between genres are not necessarily symmetric. Importantly, A encodes the graph structure between the genres, and it takes the role of a weighted adjacency matrix of something that we call a genre interaction graph, which is used in our paper to obtain interpretable insights on the relationships and trajectories between microgenres. Now, I will try to make the description of the model a bit more detailed now. As discussed before, uh, as you can see from the left, uh, for each time period, we have the genre counts for each uh, user, which we call n. Uh, the sum of counts gives uh, um, the total user activity within that time period, so we call it xi. Uh, and uh, the genre distribution at time t is simply given by the ratio between these two quantities. Um, the two key features of this model are two, uh, two. First, we use an exponential rating moving average distribution for the genre distributions using a global exploration parameter gamma. The global exploration parameter gamma expresses how fast we would like to explore the music space and shift the current preferences. The second key feature of a model is a Poisson multinomial two-stage distribution. In particular, user activity and genre distributions are modeled separately. So the user activity is simply assumed to, be, uh, to have a Poisson distribution centered at the previous value of the user activity. And conditional on the user activity at time t, then uh, the genre counts are assumed to be multinomial with uh, total number of uh, given by the user activity at time t, and uh, probabilities given by the product between uh, the moving average distribution uh, pi at time t minus 1 and the transition matrix A. Now, how can we evaluate if the model is doing well? We did it in three ways. First, a good model must minimize the total variation between the observed and predicted genre distributions. Um, Second, we would like to predict if the consumption of the each genre decreased or increased uh, between two consecutive periods. Third, we would like to predict which completely new genres would be streamed. And we did it in two ways. First, with respect to the previous time period, so uh, a new genre only is, uh, a genre is considered new only if it wasn't streamed in the previous time period, or with respect to the entire streaming history meaning that a genre is considered new if it was never streamed by the user. <clears throat> we compared the PTM against a range of different alternatives for the same type of data. Uh, so just to remind you, uh, sequences of matrices of counts and the competing models uh, that we uh, identified are dynamic Poisson factorization, Poisson after aggressive models, and the negative matrix factorization, uh, along with um, a simple baseline, which is based on the previous observation. So, we predict um, the activity at time t using just the activity at t minus 1. Um, the PTM, the preference transitional model, achieves the best performance in uh, the area under the curve for both the receiver operating characteristics and precision recall curves. And this is just for uh, prediction of um, new genres uh, at the next time point. But uh, the same holds uh, also for all the other metrics. Uh, the PTM consistently outperforms uh, uh, competing methods for the same type of data. Now, I mentioned before that one of the advantage, uh, the main advantage of our model, uh, one of the main advantages of our model was the interpretability of uh, the transition matrix A. So, uh, as I said, A is highly interpretable. Um, 
it's a transition matrix, so each row sums to 1, and we expect most of the probability to be around the diagonal, since users that like the given genre will probably like it also in the near future. And it's exactly what this plot is trying to uh, express. So you can see on the left uh, the, um, the scatter plot of the transition, uh, the diagonal uh, elements of the matrix A, uh, sorted by um, genre ID. Uh, where the genre IDs are sorted by popularity. So as you can see, most of the mass for each row is concentrated on the diagonal. And similarly, on the right, you can see the histogram uh, of, uh, of the diagonal entries, where you can see that um, for um, um, popular genres, we tend to have most of the mass concentrated to the, on the diagonal, whereas for uh, less popular genres, we uh, observe that some of the coefficients are actually close to zero. But uh, the interesting part of the matrix is not really on the diagonal, but on the off-diagonal elements. So uh, A essentially could be used as a map to introduce users to a new genre. So in this picture, uh, we estimated the most likely parts from EDM and classical music uh, in green to other genres that are plotted in red. Importantly, those parts are estimated only from the user trajectories. and We don't feed in any information or covariate about microgenres into the model. And importantly, the model is learning meaningful relationship between genres only based on how users explored the music space. We also generalized this work to other uh, data sets and tested the PTM on other applications, for example, prediction of uh, movies and restaurants. And again, the PTM achieves the best performance across different tasks, showing uh, that the model is generalizable also to other domains. So to conclude, in this presentation, I try to show that there are consistent patterns exploring how users' preferences shift over time. And we propose the preference transition model, PTM, which is a simple and interpretable statistical framework for estimating user trajectories. This could be used to increase diversity within recommended systems, which is a desirable property uh, for modern music streaming services. Thank you very much, and uh, I'm looking forward to hearing your questions at the Q&A sessions. Thank you very much.